Let's see some code. Here we have a typical Redux code. We define action types, initial state, a reducer function, and actions. At first we define all synchronous actions, and then just one asynchronous action. Let's see how much boilerplate we have to write. To create an action we first need to define a constant for its type. Then we need to create an action creator function. And also don't forget that if we need an extra data, we need to put it in the payload property. How can we simplify it with Redux Toolkit? We will start with a small helper function called createAction. I am going to create a small test action to check how it works. As you see, it returns a function. This function has a few interesting details. For example, there are a couple of ways to get the action type. First, the function has a type property that stores its type. And second, if you convert this action into a string, you will get the action type. Now let's call this function and send some data to it. As you see, it returns an action object, which has the required property type. And the data that we send to it is stored in the payload property. Now let's rewrite our code to use this utility. We have created the actions. These are not just action types, they are action creators. For each action we just invoke the create action and send the type to it. And now we can easily remove all synchronous actions. The next step is to change the case conditions. For now we'll use the type property of every action creator. And as you see the app still works as expected. So this is the simplest way to create an action and use it.